In this video, we're going to focus on how we can do scale stacking. So right now you can see here, we are stacking the scale based on two different charts. And we put that on top of each other. And you can see here where one scale starts and ends. And then you can see where the other one starts and ends as well. And this is very useful because with this, you can combine charts together to create more advanced types. So let's start to explore how to do this right now. In this video, we're going to focus on how to do scale stacking in Chart.js. And this is really interesting because this is a new feature that was introduced in Chart.js 3.5.1, which is the latest one as of now. And what it really does is if you can now, instead of stacking, for example, bar, you stack a bar, now you can stack a scale. And that can be interesting because with that, you can create new options. Of course, let's start to dive a bit more deeper what it does. And afterwards, eventually, I'll be making more videos about this specific item. So let's start to look at this first. All right, so what we need first is we're going to go to the charges3.com here, getting started link, and then we just grab the default code here. And with this default code, we will start to work. We're going to create a simple scale stack, very similar to the one you can see on the default uh, page or on the home page of charges, uh, on charges.org. All right, so I'm going to, I paste it in here. I just changed here the title, save that, and there we are. So now we have our chart. The next thing what I want to work on is uh, just create a second data set because we need two data sets to work with this. All right, so I'm going to copy this. Once I copy that, I'm going to put a comma and paste it in here. And then eventually for the labels, well, I will just say here power because I will probably get one with the power on and off. And then what I will do here is I'm going to remove the colors or are going to remove every other option here except for a single one here and there we are so we have this here of this color here and then what i will do is i just copy that and place this in here as well make sure that this is a solid color all right so now i have this here and this eventually will become a line chart and this upper one here will become a bar chart but the bar chart i do want to have the same color just one single color so I'd keep it also a bit more cleaner. It's easy to follow along then. So I'm going to just paste it in here. There we are, put this in there and then. All right, so if I save this right now and refresh, you might see we just have a um, basically a bar chart with two data sets. So what we need to do now is start to create our second scale. So to do this, we need to indicate that one of these data sets are is or is related to a specific scale here while the other one will be related to the default scale of y that we have here but we can give it any name however it doesn't matter so much so if you're familiar with how you can create a scale on the left and the right side the same trick is how you can put a scale on top of each other or how you can stack the scale so that would mean here the y-axis id and then we can say here a scale name so this is basically the object that we're going to use now so this could be y1 y2 that's why we have here the scales y so this will be matching eventually but here i will just say power and the reason why i'm saying power because we have a label of power and this will be later power on power off and this one here would be maybe the temperature or something like that this could be temp all right so temp in cs i guess or celsius or anything you want fahrenheit depends on your prefer preference so what we have here now is the following we have this here and i want to now grab it if i save this let's see what happens all right so you can see right now immediately it understands something's happening there's a second skill already however it is not yet stacked so this is what we're going to do right now so the first thing what i'm going to do is i'm going to first renumber them or give it a different value name and that will be the first thing that we need to do. So what we're going to say here, power. So make sure you have a comma here. And then you say power. And the reason why now we can use the object is because we have indicated it here. And then we put in here the following. You can say your type. And this type will be the category. So if you're really interested in that, I have some other videos as well about this. But basically, category is similar to a bar chart here. This is what we call category here. You have linear which is based on uh, values as well. So category is based, we have like this, and we have a linear as well. And this here, in this case here, the category will be on the side here for the scale here. So that will be yes and no, or on and off in this case, power on, power off. 
So we have the category here. And then what we need to do is here, we need to indicate the labels. So we say here labels, and then here we need to make this a bracket here because this is an array. And here we could say power, but well, this is on, comma, and then we have here another string, and this will be off. So now if I save this, let's see what's going on. All right. So now you can see we are starting to recognize certain values. Of course, we have still an issue here because the, this value here is not identified as on or off. It just, we don't just know what it is because right now it is nothing. It's just a number here. So we can now start to play around with that. So let's copy this and just put this in here and see what happens afterwards. So if I just paste all of these uh, in total of seven times, so I'm going to get, copy another off. So we have then seven of these values and save that. If I save that and refresh, you can now see, all right, it does something, but we're not yet stacked. We're now really just side by side on it. And this is not what we want. We want it stacked on top. So how do we do this right now? All right, so in here, comma, and then what you do the next is you just say stack. And the stack could be anything, but the stack here, I'm giving you, we can power, but we can just say here, uh, stack. Well, we can just say power for now. And the reason why this will work is because we have it twice here. Also for the Y axis, it will be a stack of the same value here. This must be similar. So it will understand that these two are matched together. So you could basically stack another one on top of it or on the side if it's a different value. So this could be power, maybe something else. Let's say um, uh, water. I have no idea. I'm just making it up. But you will see that here it will recognize it so there we are so we have something here of course the entire item just doesn't look properly yet no. so what we're going to do is here now start to play around with it we could control the amount of size we have up and down here for example this on and off doesn't need 50 percent of the chart space but this one here might want to need more let's say we want this maybe only um 30% or 33% and the others, the remaining. So what we can do here, we just put a comma and then we say here, stack weight. Basically here we calculate the rate in ratio. So we could say here, the default bar chart should be, this one here should be at least two thirds, while the other one should be one third. So we can say here number two, and then we say here, stack weight one. Make sure you have a comma here, if we save this, refresh now you can see it is starting to work a bit more better but you can see still here this is not really desirable so how can we solve that as well so for this what we could do here is the following we need to give it what we call an offset just an offset just to give it some space between so in here we're going to say comma then we say offset and then we said here um, offset uh, this could be true. I guess that's the term offset true. All right, there we are. So now we have this here, but of course you can see this is still a bar chart. What I want to do now is I want to convert this into a line and this should be as well as a bar. All right. So what we're going to do here, this I'm going to remove or cut it out. Then in here, I'm going to say here, the type will be bar. And for this one, the type will be line. And what I would like to do as well, besides the line here, maybe at, at the end here, comma, and then we say here, not only line, but this will be a stack. So we say here, true. And if I save this now, refresh. All right, I see it doesn't work as expected. So let's see what's going on here. Step this true. We have the type equals the line. Now that should be all fine. Maybe here the border width, I'm going to remove that. All right. So somehow it has something unexpected here. And uh, it's time to check what exactly is the issue here. So I'm going to check here what will be the issue. All right, so after some quick checking, I figure out what it is. All right, so we have to do a few items here. First of all, you can see here we have the position left here, but I realized we didn't indicate it here. And that's probably the biggest issue here. So if I put in here position left as well, so we'll be both recognized here all right so we have this now so we have this on and off value see as you can see here this is just a single value here so that's why this is a label 
and this is a category type. The next thing what I want to do here is just to make sure that this type here will be what we call a linear version. So we say here linear, comma. If I save that here, we can refresh here and everything still maintains the same, it will not be any problem. Next what we need to do here, and this is probably a useful item as well, is uh, to give it a color here. So you can see that the scale has been stacked on top of each other, you can see the color differences. So this is a very useful item as well. So we can say here, this will be grid. And in the grid here, we can say border color. And the border color here will be, well, you guess it, we guess we will just grab this specific item here for the border color and duplicate that one down here. So then we have the same blue color here. And what I will do is exactly the same for the other grid here. So with the comma here, paste that in here, and this one will be nice red. So we're going to grab this red color, copy and paste. All right, so if I save this now, refresh, you can see here now the lines here has been nicely stacked. And you can see here the tick or basically the color of them matching where the scales start and end. And this is basically what you can do. Maybe if you don't like the y-axis here, there's an option here to rename them. You can just give this another value here, comma, and then you say here y-axis ID, and this could be maybe temp, and then we can copy temp and just replace this with temp. So if I save this now and refresh, you can see here basically what happens it is exactly the same, but, but under the hood, it creates a new object called temp with these values here. Doesn't really matter, to be honest, not really. You don't see any difference here. You can see the beginning of zero, we can maybe even remove that one that has no value for, for us in this case, but that's all right for now. So this is basically how you can do a stack scale. Can you do more with it? I'm very certain there's a lot more that I have to discover, but this is a quite interesting topic. Next. If you enjoy this and maybe you'd like to create something else that is also unique and special, check out my other video here. In one of my videos here that where you learn how to create a speedometer with Nido gauge chart. This is a really interesting one. It's a long video, but it creates something that many people tend to be interested in, and that is a gauge chart with a speedometer needle. So interested? Check out the link, it should pop up right now somewhere on the screen.